All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. So we've got a lot of interesting stories in the world of bodybuilding today. Um, we're going to talk about Sean Roden being banned from the Olympia. We're going to talk about the IFBB's response to Sean Roden being banned from the Olympia. We're also going to talk about William Bonac leaving his coach, Neil Hill. And we're also going to talk about Kai Green over the past weekend has been dropping a lot of major hints that he might be making a comeback to the Olympia. Um, so we're going to discuss that in this video as well. But first, I want to start out with the Sean Roden story. So as most of you already know by now, Sean Roden has been uninvited from the 2019 Mr. Olympia. In a statement put out by uh, AMI and also the Olympia, AMI is the parent company that owns the Mr. Olympia, um, they said Sean's eligibility has been revoked from competing in 2019 and all future Mr. Olympia competitions, as well as the fact that Sean Roden's image will be pulled from all AMI-owned publications, including Muscle and & Fitness and Flex. And keep in mind, this is all considering the fact that Sean Roden is innocent until proven guilty, um, which is why I like the response put out by the official IFBB. So the IFBB put out this response on July 14, 2019. So I think it's important to clarify that the IFBB does not call the shots with the Olympia. The Olympia is owned by AMI, controlled by AMI, and those decisions are made separate from the IFBB, even though the Olympia is an IFBB competition. AMI is the shot caller behind the IF, behind the Olympia. So when the Olympia banned Sean Roden, I saw a lot of comments saying boycott the IFBB, getting mad at the IFBB, when this is something the IFBB and Jim Mannion really have no control over really whatsoever. Um, so the IFBB basically would have the control to revoke Sean's pro card or to revoke his pro status or maybe even revoke his past Olympia win, maybe you know, kind of clear that record. But really, the main power that Jim Mannion and the IFBB would have would be to revoke Sean's pro status. So that's really what we're talking about here in their post. So they said, the IFBB Professional League has not at this time taken any action for or against Sean Roden. Following the advice of our attorneys, the IFBB Professional League will continue to closely monitor the situation while respecting the rights of the accuser, the accused, and the company, AMI, which owns and operates the prestigious Mr. Olympia competition. This is difficult and emotional time for all involved, signed Jim Mannion, IFBB uh, Pro League President. So I actually really like and appreciate this statement by the IFBB because they are waiting um, until the outcome of this trial to make a decision on what to do about and with Sean Roden, which I think is probably what the Mr. Olympia should have done as well. Um, just waited to see what the outcome is going to be before they made this very quick decision to say Sean Roden's banned from 2019 Olympia, all future Olympias, and being removed from all of our publications. That's a pretty, to me, seems like a premature um, step to take. So to me, the worst case scenario here would be if Sean Roden is found guilty and the IFBB makes a decision to maybe pull Sean's pro status and maybe erase the record of his 2018 win. Um, if he's revoked as an IFBB pro or banned from the IFBB, that's probably as serious as it can get. He's already, you know, the Olympia thing is already pretty much done for Sean. He's not doing 2019. He's in his mid-40s, and they also mentioned not compete, not being able to compete in future Olympias. Um, so I don't know how many years down the line Sean would even want to continue competing at the Olympia. 2019 could have been the last year he wanted to do it, for all we know. Um, so Sean at the Olympia is probably pretty much over. Um, but does this mean he could still compete in other IFBB Pro Shows if he wanted to? He could. But my guess would be we're not going to see Sean on any bodybuilding stage anytime soon. And my guess would also be we might not ever see Sean on any bodybuilding stage ever again. This is something that's going to be very hard to come back from, whether Sean is guilty or innocent. His character and his public perception and his image is going to be damaged by this no matter what the outcome of this trial. So whether or not he even wants to be seen on stage or in the public eye again after this um, remains to be seen. We might not ever see Sean compete again, which is a reality that I think we're going to have to start facing um, as this trial progresses. So let's go ahead and move on here to the Kai Green story. So Kai Green has been dropping a lot of hints at the possibility of him returning to the Olympia. The first was this right here posted by Aaron Singerman, um, where he's got Brian Shaw and Eduardo talking about Kai Green competing. Yeah. Eduardo, should Kai do the Olympia? Yes. Brian Shaw? Yes. Easy yes. Come on, this is like the opportunity of a lifetime. Easy money. Yo, what's good? Uh, Aaron, you got jokes. Singerman! <laughs> Minikai just said, what's up? Anyway, what's good? Brian Shaw, Eduardo. Yeah, man, stranger things can happen. I don't know. We'll see what happens soon. Peace. 
So Kai Green responded to this video and said basically the same response he said last year. Stranger things have happened. But then after this video, Kai Green also posted another video of Jay Cutler talking about Kai Green and Jay Cutler saying that Kai should come back to the Olympia. So I will roll that clip for you guys right here. Kai's got an un unbelievable physique. Walking in the gym, he is still Mr. Olympia more than any guy I've ever seen. The fans are waiting, man. Kai Green, the fans are waiting to see what you can bring. Get back on that stage and, and make the fans happy and do yourself a favor and win it. Now, the interesting part of this video that Kai posted was the caption that he put on this video. He tagged Jay Cutler and said, you great diplomat, you. Damn, you got me thinking and organizing my priorities. I've got some film commitments and animation projects for King Kai. And I think if my management can sort it out, we can come in and body the entire world, create the most monstrous earth shattering noise. The world will quake. Everybody comes up. So that caption is pretty much as direct as we've seen Kai Green ever say or hint at coming back to the Olympia. But I'm going to be honest with you guys. I'm not going to hype up a Kai Green comeback. I'm not going to say that I think Kai is going to come back. We've done this for the past five years now. I think Kai Green is done at the Mr. Olympia. I think we're never going to see Kai on the Olympia stage again. Now, I could be wrong, but I don't think Kai is going to be at the 2019 Olympia. I think all the speculation about that is useless. We're nine weeks out now. If Kai were prepping, he would have already started prepping by now, and we would already know that Kai is getting in shape for the Olympia. I just don't think it's going to happen, and I don't think there's any point in really talking about it happening I don't think Kai is going to be at the 2019 Mr. Olympia. And I had some people that actually attended uh, Phil Heath seminar in the UK. And they made a very good point that they said Phil Heath was talking about in this seminar. Um, where he was saying anybody that competes and wins the 2019 Mr. Olympia. And this is suggesting you know, why Phil is probably not coming back in 2019. As he said, whoever wins in 2019, there's going to be kind of an asterisk next to that win. Because there was no competition. Sean Roden wasn't there. Big Rami wasn't there. Phil Heath wasn't there. And the competition was wide open. Now, I don't really think that's necessarily true. That there's going to be an asterisk next to their name because there was no competition. There's still a lot of competition at the Olympia. Um, it's just wide open because the reigning Mr. Olympia isn't there. Which has happened before in Olympia history. It's just never been under these circumstances. You know, there's been 14 Mr. Olympias. And a lot of them have retired during their competitive prime. Um... And the following year, left the Olympia title wide open. This has happened many times before. And I don't think anybody would say the person that won the year after someone retired, um, you know, there's an asterisk next to their name. So I don't really think that's the case. I think whoever wins this year will still be a very solid Mr. Olympia winner. But I do think at this point, at nine weeks out, less than nine weeks out, it's safe to say we're not going to see Phil. We're not going to see Kai. We're not going to see Rami. We're going to see... And we're not going to see Roden, and we're going to see an entirely different landscape in the top six at the Mr. Olympia, which I am very excited for. Um, but I think the drama is going to overshadow the actual show. And I was talking to Aaron Singerman about this earlier. I think there's so much drama going on right now about the Mr. Olympia. And we're going to talk about this with this final story with William Bonac, that all this drama is going to be talked about more than the actual result of the 2019 Mr. Olympia. So let's get to the final story here. And this story is about William Bonac leaving his coach, Neil Yoda Hill. Now, there's been a lot of drama this year about Neil Hill, specifically about Neil and Big Rami and what the circumstances were that led to Neil and Big Rami not working with each other. Um, and this was a big public issue. So William Bonac posted a very long rant on his Instagram, which I think I actually have some respect for him for being open and honest and being, you know, having the balls to really say these things because he said a lot. He said a lot in these Instagram stories. So he said, one thing that I didn't realize um, is that he was giving his coach, Neil Hill, 40% of his winnings from shows, which to me seems like an extremely high, exorbitant amount of money, um, especially when you're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars that William Bonac has won at competitions like the Olympia. 40% is a lot of money. And he goes on to basically imply that Neil Hill and him stopped working together because of money and because William wanted to cut that 40% down to 20%, which to me still seems pretty reasonable. Neil Hill would still be making tens of thousands of dollars from working with William Bonac yearly, just based on William Bonac's current winnings. And he says that was the primary reason they stopped working together. And he goes on to say a lot more about him. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and just roll that video for you guys here. It's a long one, so bear with me. But it's definitely worth a watch because it's very interesting. And William Bonac really pulls no punches on this video. Also want to say, hey guys, William Bonac over here. I got an announcement to make. 
Just want to tell all my fans and supporters, you know, my sponsors, everybody, I appreciate you. Thank you for supporting me for the past seven to eight years. Um, also want to say that me and you has stopped working together since today on. Uh, this is something that we discussed about four months ago, uh, but we still try to work it out, you know, but it didn't work, you know. Um, different thinking. Um, to me, it is about... You know, I think it's about money, <laughs> you know, but I won't, you know, I'm not going to um, put him down, you know, but, you know, it is what it is, you know, and um, I think I'm better off alone as well. I don't think, I know for sure I'm better off alone, you know, and um, yeah, I just want to let you guys know, you know, I'm no longer with Y3T anymore, you know, and now I can understand and I can really relate with those who've been before me, you know. So, um, to all the new athletes um, who's looking for a coach or whatsoever, think twice. You understand? Some people, they just want to make money over you. And once you wake up and you open up your eyes and you reduce it, you understand? Then they start acting strange. You know, so money changed people, my friend. Money really changed people. And a lot of people, they just like the spotlight, you know, so they can create, you know, the place platform to make it bigger to make more money out of people you understand and some people will pretend like oh they really care so much about you they want the best for you and your family blah 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 but remember all the work is you that's doing all the work not your coach your coach only writes stuff this and that they change it <laughs> like the write stuff for 16 weeks they change it once in uh let's say <laughs> a half of it after eight weeks they change it again that's not a coach man that's not a coach, especially not when you get 40% of my winnings. 40% of my winnings and my bonus. You understand what I mean? So since I stopped that, brought it from 40% to 20%, things started to change. I asked some other people, say, how, do, how, do, how much do you pay? You know, some people in the top three of the Olympia. And they were like, they were like, really, do you pay that much? I said, yeah, but I used to pay 40 so I was like, what? Hmm? Okay, so these guys pay way much less than I do. And this guy is a champion. You understand what I mean? So it started made me think, you know, and um, so instead of the from 40% to 20%, and I was like, listen, if there's somebody that I have to pay money, it should be my trainer's partner. He's the one putting all the work with me day in, day out in the gym, not my coach. He just writes something, then every two, three, days what's your weight what the fuck my weight has to do with this every uh three four days i send him a pictures uh the lightning i can't see this i can't see that then what's the point of me sending you pictures understand but this has been going on for some time you know and now it's time to cut it off you know because you know i'm a lawyer person you know but it comes to a point i got to think about my family as well you know because some people they rent a fucking apartment for three thousand dollars a month they barely at home and that three thousand a month is my money my friend it's my money you get me that three thousand dollar a month is my money you know how much i pay for my rent in my house <laughs> that whole three thousand dollars i pay my rent i pay my car i pay everything i have two houses I pay of it, everything with 3,000 euros and $3,000, You someone use it for the rent and still want more from you. You know, how fair is this? I don't know who the money is going to because, man, never mind. Just you guys just know, you know, use your brains, you know, and don't let nobody fool you out there. Understand? And um, we always like, oh, when we do a show, thank you, my coach, this and that and that. You know, the funny part of this, I'm going to be open. The funny part of this is even like when some people, they can, you know, <laughs> they, they will talk so bad about the person that they prep, about the person that brought them up, about the person, because of that person, we know the coach. I'm not going to call names. I'm going to say it, you know. For example, like um, <laughs> like a 2-1-2 two -two champion, seven times champion. Same thing. You know, I've been hearing a lot of stuff about this guy that I even started to hate him. 
You know, and the person who was telling me this was the closest to him. You understand? And the same person, <laughs> the same person's telling me that. I was like, okay, if you talk about him like that, how would you talk about me behind my back? And the funny part is, the reason why he was talking behind his back all the time like that was because of money. Because of money. Yeah, he doesn't pay me and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but he gave you your fucking name. Without him, who would you be? You understand what I mean? Be fair, man. You was living in India. You had nothing to when you met me. You understand? You build up now, you know, and when somebody reduces the price and you get angry and blah, 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 and suddenly, all oh, I treat you bad and blah, blah, blah. My friend, go check yourself, man. I had respect for you, but now I lost all my respect for you. I lost all my respect for you because I know how you've been talking behind people who through that people you eat and you talk so bad about them people. So what the, how, how are you going to treat me then? What do you say behind my back? Huh? What do you say behind my back? Aside from the part that you use my name, you know, to get more athletes. You know, like, yeah, I prep William. Yeah, with William, I do this and that. Yeah, with Flex, I do this and that. Give us a break, man. Be real. Yeah? Be real. You have eaten enough of me for the past six years, okay? Just be grateful and say, thank you, William. Thank you. Because of you, I got a roof over my head and I didn't do shit for it. So, so that wraps it up for the video today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to this channel for more updates on the 2019 Mr. Olympia, bodybuilding in general, and Sean Roden. Um, as always, thank you guys for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Nick Strength and Power, signing out.